Hello everybody, this is Dr. Ashur. This is our second questions and answers uh, session about management of peptic ulcer. In the first session, we talked about the, uh, or questions, we did address the questions related to the first video about pathophysiology of peptic ulcer and regulation of acid secretion. Today we are going to uh, have this Q&A session about uh, questions related to the second video about treatment of peptic ulcer where we discussed H2 blockers and proton pump inhibitors, but this one we will discuss uh, questions related to H2 blockers. The first question that I received, and again I'm just copying the questions, so no grammatical revision, just as it is. It says how nocturnal acidity is important determinant of duodenal ulcer healing. So now nocturnal acidity, the increase of the gastric acidity during night is uh, determined determinant of duodenal ulcer healing. Okay, so this is related to uh, my video, Peptic Ulcer Treatment Part 1, exactly under the H2 blockers, where I said because nocturnal acidity is very important determinant of duodenal ulcer healing, even dosing, evening dosing of H2 uh, blockers is adequate therapy in most instances. So the, the, the uh, uh, audience is asking about how this is really important, the nocturnal acidity and the duodenal ulcer healing. So this is the main core of the question. So the, there is a circadian rhythm of gastric acid secretions where it peaks during night, specifically between 10 uh, p.m. Uh, 10 p.m. and 2 a.m., okay? So, uh, in duodenal ulcer patients, this circadian rhythm is further uh, changed, okay? And the gastric acid secretion at night even increased during night, okay? So, basic acid secretion peaks at approximately midnight, okay? With minimal acid secretion occurring during the day in the absence of food ingestion. So, the if the patient is fasting during that day, the, the amount of acid secretion at night will be huge as compared to the, during the day, there will be a minimal acid secretion, okay? Okay, this is number one. So now, for if the acid is peaking at night, we need to deal with it at night. So that's why you give these evening doses at night. And when you come to the clinical uh, studies, okay, so they, when they give the patients the dosing of H2 blockers, uh, rhinitidine, uh, Zantac, uh, famotidine, and others, at once at a big time, as compared to multiple dosing uh, during the day, the once a day at bed time was more uh, convenient for the patient, there is more compliance, and also the, 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 the activity of or the healing effect was even equal to the multiple dosing, or sometimes even better. So why need why do I need to ask the patient to take you know this tablet like twice a day or three times a day? No, just take just one single dose at a time, and that's enough because nocturnal acidity is uh, is peaking at night. Okay, these data strongly support the notion that nocturnal acid suppression alone is sufficient to heal a duodenal ulcer. Okay. The second question says, uh, can you explain more how absorption of H2 blocker is enhanced by food? I cannot quite imagine that. Okay, let us discuss that. Uh, whenever you eat, okay, there is a delay in stomach emptying. So the food should stay for some time in the stomach so that uh, uh, will give some time to be digested, right? Okay. So the prolonged retention in the stomach increases the percentage of administered basic drugs that are dissolved when they pass into the small intestine and hence uh, increase their absorption. What that means? So let, let us take this application here. They said basic drugs, right? Are these, it says basic drugs, okay? Administered basic drugs. H2 blockers are basic drugs. For example, this is FAMOTD. FAMOTD, look here, NH2, NH2. NH2, NH2, this is 2NH2, like NH2, NH2, okay? All of these are basic groups, so it's very basic. If I put a drug that's basic in a stomach where, where there is an acid, as you know from chemistry, there is, it says acid plus base, 
the product will be salt plus water, right? So it will be dissolving, right? The more the drug is dissolved, okay, the easy it will be absorbed when it moves from the intestine to from the stomach into the duodenum, duodenum, and ileum, right? So when it when when when, when transported into the small intestine, it will be most of the drug will be dissolved to the absorption will be better. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Okay, uh, 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 question number two, uh, number three, H two blockers and acid secretion. Uh, it says mechanism of action of H two blockers. Can you explain uh, again what's meant by modest action on meal stimulated acid secretion? This means that H two blockers have modest action on uh, meal stimulated acid secretion. We have basal acid secretion, so no food. When you when you eat food, there is a meal stimulated acid secretion. Means that acid secretion will be more during or after a certain meal. Uh, don't understand why this is these these questions are related to the above one. Why uh, you explain like ECL can activate parietal cells? I didn't say ECL itself activate parietal cells. I said uh, uh, like gastrin activates uh, the release of histamine from ECL, and this histamine will bind. Uh, to the H2 receptors on the wall of parietals. Okay, acetylcholine can activate muscarinic activity uh, cell directly. Yes, this happens. Acetylcholine can activate parietal cell directly. We'll see this in the uh, diagram in the next slide. Uh, Means let us refer to parietal cell. Yes, uh, acid secretions from parietal cell. Let us go into details to discuss this question. Uh, again, it is related to the uh, uh, statement saying they have. A modest effect on meal stimulated acid secretion, which is stimulated by gastrin and acetylcholine as well as histamine. Okay, Re please review the pathophysiology of uh, a peptic ulcer. We said these stimulants, these three guys, okay, we said this is neuronal, this is endocrine, and this is paracrine, right? If you remember, this is coming from ECL. So these are the three hormones that are related to enhancement of acid secretion. So there are these three factors, okay? So let us answer the question now. So normally gastrin can, as I said, bind to the ECL, pterochromaffin like cells, okay? And activate the release of histamine from these cells. Histamine will act on H2 receptors and activate the uh, release of proton. This proton will bind to CL, then I have HCL. Uh, another pathway, I said it can directly activate parietal cells. Here is a very major point, okay? So uh, let us now discuss it now. So now I eat a meal, okay? There is a meal. I have a food now, okay? I have shawarma, I have kebab, I have whatever, okay? Nasi, I am in Malaysia, and or whatever. Okay, so meal, and I have already eaten. eaten. So uh, now what happened? The the level of gastrin will increase. We said before, in, uh, uh, gastrin uh, secretion increased by three things, right? Neuronal, by acetylcholine. We said acetylcholine increased gastric, gastrin secretion. And acetylcholine, sir, is, is, the production is increased by activation of the parasympathetic nervous system. And this is activated by sight. I mean, when you see food, right? Sight, smell, anticipation of food and smelling of food, okay, all of these things can activate uh, 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 acetylcholine production. Acetylcholine will activate gastrin production. So this is number one, okay? Uh, number two for gastrin uh, secretion is the, 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 the uh, GIT or the stomach distension by food. When you eat, there is some distension, like the, full is, the food is occupying significant part of your stomach. This increases gastrin. The third thing is the type of food you are eating, the material, the food you are eating, protein, this protein will stimulate gastric secretion. Uh, this makes sense, of course, because protein needs pepsin, which is the proteolytic enzyme, pepsin each HCL to be activated, right? Please remember. Okay, so again, meal, I eat meal, there is increase in gastric secretion, we agreed on that, right? Okay, right? Okay, so gastric is, uh, is, is secretion is augmented, it will. It can act on, as I said, uh, ECL to, uh, to activate release of histamine, which activate H2 receptors, and then HCL, or directly. So now when I use H2 blockers, they will just block that part. They are not going to block that part. They don't bind CCK2 or CCKB. 
they don't. Okay, they only bind to the CCK, uh, they bind to the H2 receptor. Okay, they don't bind this. So this pathway will be going on. The other question is related to acetylcholine. I said acetylcholine can activate the mascarinic receptors on the surface of parietal cells directly. This is this is one here. See, acetylcholine can bind to mascarinic receptors, and this will activate again HCL secretion. Right. This is in addition to the other pathway of acetylcholine through also ECL. So acetylcholine in this regard is almost similar to uh, gastrin, right? In this regard, in that uh, in fact that it, uh, it, it itself can uh, directly activate the production of HCL from parietal cells or it can activate the release of histamine from ECL and histamine can activate H2 receptor. Both can do that. I hope this is clear. So now, uh, again, coming back to the question. So now, the uh, uh, H2 blockers, they block this only. So when I eat a meal, gastrin secretion peaks. Okay, there is an, a huge increase of gastrin. Okay, this gastrin, part of it will work here, part will work here. Histamine can only uh, uh, inhibit this, I'm sorry, uh, antihistaminics or uh, H2 blockers, exactly. They only inhibit that part. They cannot inhibit that part. And also, because I'm, I see food, I anticipate food, I, okay, so, uh, 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 and smell food, all of these will activate parasympathetic nervous system. Acetylcholine can activate the uh, release of histamine also here. But also, acetylcholine can directly activate the parietal cells. H2 blockers will have no effect on that. So that's why it partially inhibits meal stimulated acid secretion. This is here, I have it here. So now this is the gastrin, okay? Can bind here, okay? Then release uh, histamine, or it can uh, directly act on the CCK2 receptor on the parietal cells, okay? Uh, as compared to proton pump inhibitors, why proton pump inhibitors are much, much more potent than H2 blockers? Because all of these effects will culminate at the end with activation of protein kinases, right? These protein kinases will help the uh, movement uh, of the uh, proton pump from the cytoplasm into the cell membrane. Okay. All of this will come here. And then the, the proton pump inhibitors, uh, the omeprazole, lanzoprazole, and, so, uh, and many of them, Will, will reversely bind to the proton pump, if, if you remember, okay? This will inhibit this. So to inhibit the very fast, uh, very last step. So that's why they are very potent uh, as compared to H2 blockers who can, uh, regarding meal stimulated uh, acid secretion, they can partially inhibit uh, acid secretion. I hope this is clear. So, uh, uh, I mean, I have it also written here. So H2 blockers suppress basal levels of gastric acid secretion. They are doing very good job in that but may partially block meal stimulated uh, acid secretion, which is gastrin mediated. And if I have more gastrin, okay, I guess gastrin can directly activate acid secretion on the parietal cells without the need to activate histamine release from ECM. It look as have no effect on nocturnal serum gastrin concentration. And even when you use the H2 blockers, gastrin, because made by food, gas, serum, serum gastrin secretion is uh, higher after cymated interval or any H2 blockers. So when you use H2 blockers, gastrin secretion will go more. So use H2 blockers and also use the meal. Both of them will increase gastrin. Gastrin can activate both ACL-mediated effect uh, or non-ACL-mediated effect means that it directly activates the parietal cells to secrete HCL. Uh, H2 receptor antagonists are less potent than PPI. We already explained that because PPI inhibit the last pathway. Okay, as alternative pathways of parietal cells activation remains uninhibited, this is referring to the H2 blocker. Okay, the gastrin, the direct effect, and also the acetylcholine can activate directly the parietal cell. They completely inhibit histamine uh, binding H2 receptors and the base lateral membrane resulting in reduction of gas acid excretion. The inhibitory effect can be overcome by high gastrin level. Okay, as occurs post branding after meal. I hope this part is clear. Okay. Now the last question uh, says, uh, if dose reduction is required in patients, uh, is referring to H2 blockers also, with, uh, is, if dose reduction is required in patients with renal hepatic problems, does this mean they will reach 50% acid reduction in a slower pace and the healing treatment uh, will take a longer time? 
Okay, this is referring also to, to uh, my statement in one of my lectures saying dose reduction is the, I mean the first video, uh, I'm sorry, the second video, peptic ulcer treatment. Uh, dose reduction is needed in patients with moderate to severe renal and possibly se severe hepatic insufficiency. In the elderly, there is a decline of up to 50% in drug clearance, okay? So this is referring to that part. So my answer is yes, okay? If you have to uh, decrease the dose, the effect will be decreased and the healing will take some time. Uh, the alternative is used like the ulcer healing drugs. We're gonna talk about them, okay, uh, in our next video. Or use proton pump inhibitors because proton pump inhibitors, uh, we say dose reduction is not needed in patients with um, renal insufficiency or mild to uh, moderate liver disease. Okay, so they may be a little bit preferred as compared to H2 blockers in this regard. I hope I answered all of these uh, four questions. And if you have any more questions, please uh, post them in the comment section here, or uh, you can contact me directly. I'm happy that uh, we have discussed these questions, alhamdulillah. And I will see you soon in the uh, next session of Q&A answers related to uh, you know, proton pump inhibitors mainly and other ulcer healing drugs. Okay, see you soon. Salam. Bye.